In the time it takes you to watch this introduction, the Memphis supercluster, known as Colossus, has consumed enough electricity to power a small neighborhood for an entire week. We are talking about 100,000 liquid-cooled NVIDIA H100 and H200 GPUs working as a single, synchronized organism. This is not just a server farm. This is the largest compute event in human history, and it was built to answer one single terrifying question. Can raw brute force engineering beat the fine-tuned elegance of OpenAI? For the last three years, we have lived in the shadow of GPT. Even with the release of GPT-5 Orion, OpenAI has remained the comfortable king. They played it safe. They played it clean. But Grok 4.1 represents a different philosophy. It represents raw, unfiltered, high-velocity intelligence. Today on InfoAI Pro, we are stripping away the Elon Musk hype. We are not here to talk about memes. We are here to audit the machine. We are testing its latency, its truth-centric kernels, and its real-time architecture. Is this the system that finally breaks the OpenAI monopoly? Or is it just a very expensive experiment? Let's look at the data. To understand the true value of Grok 4.1, we have to talk about the biggest flaw of its competitors. Let's be honest about GPT-5 and Claude 4. They are brilliant, they are sophisticated, but they are essentially frozen brains. They are trained on datasets that have a rigid cutoff date. When you ask them to browse the web for current events, they are slow, clunky, and often blocked by paywalls. They are researching the present using tools from the past. Grok 4.1 changes the physics of information. It utilizes a massive-scale, real-time retrieval augmented generation pipeline connected directly to the firehose of the X platform. Now you might think it's just tweets, but from a data engineering perspective, it is the pulse of the planet. While Google's newly released Gemini 3.0 is still indexing and processing the news from this morning, Grok is analyzing the sentiment of an event that happened three seconds ago. It scans millions of live posts, filters out bot activity using vector embeddings, and synthesizes a global perspective in milliseconds. For a financial trader in London looking at market sentiment, or a cybersecurity engineer tracking a global server outage, GPT-5's high IQ doesn't matter if its facts are 10 minutes old. In the economy of attention, latency is the enemy, and Grok 4.1 effectively has zero latency. The engineering challenge here was massive. How do you filter truth from noise? Grok uses a proprietary truth-centric weighting algorithm, prioritizing community notes and verified primary sources. It's not perfect, but it is the only model attempting to index the present moment. But speed is useless if the model is stupid. Let's move to the hard numbers, the benchmarks. When XAI released previous versions, they were lagging behind. With Grok 4.1, they have closed the gap. On the human eval coding benchmarks and GSM 8K math reasoning tests, Grok 4.1 is now trading blows with the state-of-the-art models. It has become a favorite for Python scripters and Rust developers because of one specific trait. It is unsanitized. This is a controversial point, but we need to discuss it. Silicon Valley companies like Anthropic and OpenAI have spent billions building guardrails. They treat the user like a child. If you ask GPT-5 to write a piece of code that could be used for aggressive network scraping, it will likely lecture you on ethics and refuse. Grok 4.1 takes a maximalist freedom approach. It assumes the user is a competent adult. If you are a security researcher doing penetration testing, Grok will write the script. If you are dissecting a controversial political topic, Grok will give you arguments from both sides without sugarcoating the reality. For enterprise clients, this is a risk. HR departments will likely ban Grok. But for power users, developers, and researchers, this lack of friction is addictive. It feels like using a tool, not debating with a moral arbiter. This efficiency is powered by what we believe is a mixture of experts' MOE architecture on steroids. By routing queries to specific submodels within the Memphis cluster, Grok achieves high reasoning capabilities without the massive computational drag seen in older models. We cannot talk about this model without discussing its eyes. Early AI was text-only. 
Grok 4.1 is natively multimodal. It doesn't just see images, it understands context at a pixel level. In our comparison tests against Gemini 3.0 Ultra, Grok showed a significant speed advantage in processing visual inputs. You can upload a screenshot of a complex dashboard, a medical diagram, or a messy whiteboard sketch, and Grok parses the data instantly. But the real killer feature for creators is the integration of the Flux image generation engine. Think about your workflow right now. You use ChatGPT for text, then you go to MidJourney for images. It's disjointed. Grok unifies this. You can have a conversation, refine an idea, and generate photorealistic visualizations in the same chat stream. The Flux integration is currently producing some of the most realistic images we have seen, specifically in handling text in images, something that Dolly 3 still struggles with. For marketers and content creators, this all-in-one workflow is a massive time saver. If you stop the video now, you're missing the trillion dollar picture. Why is Elon Musk spending billions on this? It's not just to make a better chatbot for Twitter users, that is a side quest. The real goal of Grok 4.1 is to become the brain of physical reality. OpenAI is building a digital superintelligence. XAI is building a physical superintelligence. The neural networks training Grok are sharing DNA with Tesla's full self-driving versions. This is crucial. The model is learning spatial intelligence. It is learning physics, object permanence, and cause and effect relationships in the real world. Why does this matter? Because the final form of Grok isn't a text box on your computer screen. The final form is Optimus, the humanoid robot. By training on the massive video data from Tesla's fleet of millions of cars, Grok is being positioned as the operating system for the physical world. While Google helps you search the web, Grok is being trained to help you fold laundry, navigate a factory floor, and drive your car. This is the ecosystem play. When you subscribe to Grok, you aren't just buying a chatbot. You are funding the R&D for the first generation of embodied AI. So here is the verdict. Is Grok 4.1 the king of AI? If you are a corporate executive who needs a safe, polite, and sanitized assistant to summarize emails, stick with GPT-5 or Claude. They are the polished professionals in suits. But if you are a developer, a researcher, or someone who values raw speed, real-time access to the world's data, and zero lectures on morality, Grok 4.1 is currently the most potent weapon you can have in your arsenal. The Colossus in Memphis has awakened. The monopoly of OpenAI is officially over. We are now in a race, and in a technological arms race like this, the winner is usually the user. What is your take? Does the real-time access to X make Grok superior, or do you prefer the safety of ChatGPT? Let me know in the comments below. This is InfoAI Pro. Deep tech, no filler. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.